Okay. On YouTube? Yeah. We streaming now. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Live Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, I have with me the honor of having GE Brand Ambassador Juan Morales to discuss Smart HQ service with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know, we are holding a week-long hands-on SEAL system training. One of the important things I always tell people about SEAL system is it's a last resort. It's the last resort. Troubleshooting is first. Knowing your theory, knowing your specs, knowing how the components operate, how to test them, that's the first stop. <coughs> After all of that has been exhausted, then you get into the sealed system. Brother Juan has been gracious enough to uh, provide us an in-depth training. This is live, so if you have any questions in the comment section, please type them in. Juan, thank you for being here. The floor is yours, sir. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Brandon, and thank you to each and every one of you for joining us today. Thank you to the audience that's seeing us live after the YouTube world, LinkedIn world, wherever you may be watching us from. Again, my name is Juan Morales, Senior Staff Field Application Engineer for Smart HQ Service at GE Appliances. And today we're going to be demonstrating how to utilize the Smart HQ Service application. So what I have here is a live refrigerator, right? This is a fully functional GE refrigerator. And of course, we're gonna be showing you everything that goes on on my iPad over here. It's gonna be shown on the screen as well for your viewing convenience. So my friend, Smart HQ Service is a tool. Let me just give you a little bit of a background about the tool itself. This has been utilized for many, many years by our GE factory service. This is not something that we just came out with a couple months ago, beta testing. No, this is a solid proven, uh, technical tool that allows you to easily and quickly diagnose your appliances. So back in 2012, GE Factory Service was already using this, but uh, during those days, they were using a big bulky uh, laptop. Then they had to transition to, you know, to some kind of a tablet device, something like that. Well, now we're making it available to you in a uh, mobile platform. So you can utilize it on your uh, cell phone. If you have a, a, an iPad, a, uh, an Android tablet, you can use it as well. And that's the beauty of this product, that this works for both Android and iOS, which means that you don't have to go out there and purchase additional hardware. Whatever you're working with right now, that's gonna, uh, that's gonna be compatible with Smart HQ service. So let's go ahead and quickly get started with the demonstration. This is gonna be fully hands-on. I'm not really gonna use much, much of a PowerPoint like I typically do on our YouTube channel. But before I proceed, I do want to let you know that we do have a website, and our website is smarthqservice.com. You can visit us there anytime, any day, or you can give us a call also at 502-714-2029, and that's, that's how you can place an order for this that? amazing device. Yep, one more time, the website, smarthqservice.com, and the telephone number is 502-714-2029. All right, so let's go ahead and quickly get started. The first thing I wanna show you is how to connect the device to the actual appliance, okay? So for time purposes, what I've already done is I've already connected my Bluetooth module over here to the Ethernet port, which is located in the case of a refrigerator behind the top middle cover. So there is absolutely no tools, no disassembly. You simply reach over the back, connect the, uh, the cable there, and then the other end, of course, will go to your Bluetooth module. Now this Bluetooth module is what's going to pair it with the mobile device, in this case, uh, my iPad. And that is what's gonna allow you to extract all the information from the main control board of the appliance so that you can diagnose it using your, um, your mobile, mobile device, right? Now in this case, I know that I'm paired because just like you would pair a set of headphones or a watch, right? The little blue LED on the module is solid blue which means that I am fully paired with, with the iPad. If, I, if that LED was blinking, that would be an indication that we are not paired and we just have to do the pair. Very, very simple. Now, once you do that, right, what we basically do, let me go ahead and just kind of start from scratch over here. Take a look at the screen. So we're gonna just launch the application. Very simply, just open it up. Uh, you do need login credentials. So when you subscribe, we will give you that information. But once you do that one time, you never have to enter the, the login again, except, you know, if you, uh, uninstall the application and then reinstall it. That is the only time that you will have to do that. 
So at this point, what's happening is the device is connected to what's called the Navy beam, right? That's what we call this little Bluetooth module over here, Navy beam. Don't ask me why we called it that. That's just an arbitrary name. Uh, I'm sure there's a reason why we gave it that name. I just wasn't here long enough to find out why. But right now we're pulling all the data from the main control board of this appliance. And the first thing we're going to look at is the dashboard screen. Now, the dashboard screen is exactly what the name uh, states, right? It's going to give you um, details about what's going on with the appliance. So as you can see up here, the model and serial number have loaded, which means I've pulled the information from this appliance and this appliance only, not from something else. I didn't type it in manually. This is pulling all the data from this particular refrigerator. And uh, it gives me a couple different things here that I can look at. The first thing, all the way at the top, it says firmware update. Now, the firmware update feature, what, what it's going to do for you out there is it's going to allow you to update the firmware on the appliance you're working on if it requires it, okay? In this case, this particular appliance does not require it. This is a brand new refrigerator. I believe it was recently purchased. So there's no need for an update just yet, but maybe in the future, we decide to push an, uh, a firmware update for it. Um, if that is the case, you will be notified up here uh, with a little, kind of like a yellow triangle, like a hazard you know, hazard sign that will uh, ask you if you want to perform the firmware update. And in that case, you can simply go ahead and click the button and do the update you know, right then and there. Now, let me tell you how powerful this feature is. If there is a software related fix, right, or software related issue, I should say, that a firmware update can take care of, you might be able to complete that service call in one single service visit. All you have to do, go to the customer's house, plug in the device, click uh, start the update, and in about four or five minutes, you'll be done. Just to give you a couple examples, we do have a dishwasher out there that the the complaint or the service bulletin states that the customer can't touch the, or can't activate the controls by, by touching the, the user interface. That normally you'd have to replace what? Main control board, the user interface, right? Take you whatever it is, 20, 30 minutes to replace those parts. Well, guess what? You would have to also have to come back, right? Because you go out there, you diagnose it, you tell the customer, hey, I'll be back in whatever, a week or so. That's a second truck roll that you didn't have to do because for that specific case, a firmware update will take care of it. One shot right there. You never have to go back. Now, one more thing about firmware updates is that not only is it going to fix soft, software related issues, but it's also going to enhance the functionality of the product. So if you're out there for something else, right, let's say I'm going out there for a refrigerator to fix, uh, I don't know, their mister, an ice maker, and I see that there's an update available, then you can actually do that right then and there. And, you know, some, some service companies are actually charging for, for that service, right? Because it's not something that, you know, you would do for free, right? That's something that you're going to make the customer's appliance work better. So you can actually um, add that to add that to your bill. Nine out of 10 times, the customers are going to agree because you're already there. You may as well take care of it. So that's uh, the first thing you're going to see. Uh, but now let's get a little bit more into what the appliance is, is doing, okay? So below, you have some alert information and full code information. This is huge because it will tell you what's going on with the appliance uh, instead of you having to ask the customer what's, what's wrong with it, right? So the alert information will tell you, for example, in this particular case, it's telling us that the standalone ice maker with a unit with no ice complaint, that's because there, there might be something going on with that, uh, with that ice maker that the customer is saying it's not making ice. If we go ahead and click on it, just to understand a little bit better, uh, it will give us a description of what that means. And basically it's telling you to check the on off switch to make sure that uh, you have the ice maker actually turned on. Is All right. there a way to zoom up to make it more? Uh, no, that's about okay. as, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, but you can see like this, this could be something that you overlook, right? In some cases, uh, if the customer turned off the ice maker in their appliance, you might uh, be out there because there's no ice. And all you had to do was turn on the ice maker again, but you know, I did this back, you know, back when I was doing appliance repair, I actually swipe, you know, swapped out um, an ice maker and a main control board. So it happens, right? You're in the rush of things. You're just trying to get through your day. And little did I realize that, oh, the customer just turned the ice maker off. So smart HQ service alerts you of that. Now, as far as your fault codes, right? I work for uh, a different manufacturer prior to coming to GE Appliances. Great company, but uh, it's it's different, right? The way that you enter service mode in, 
in that in those appliances, right? I used to have to hold down two keys for eight to 12 seconds, wait until some lights blink and there's a chime, and then I get my error codes. Well, with GE appliances, you also have to do some pressing of buttons to pull those fault codes. Now, think about this. If you're working on multiple appliances and you have to memorize each, each and every single key code sequence, that'll drive you nuts, right? In fact, it's not really practical. And if you have that kind of brain power, you're in the wrong industry, my friends. You should be working for like NASA or Lockheed Martin or something like that. Because for you to memorize all those codes, it's it's not impossible, but it's just not practical. So Smart HQ service allows you to very quickly and easily see what the fault codes are in real time, right? It'll tell you exactly what's going on with the unit. And not only will it tell you which fault codes are um, in the unit, but also how long ago they happened. So if you're if you're trying to find out when this problem occurred, you could see right here four days ago, you know, maybe because this unit, you know, we plugged it in four days ago, but you know, you could have a, a frost, um, uh, not a fr like a defrost sensor, right? That just decided to die, you know, a week ago, or maybe your ice maker stopped working and it'll tell you exactly when it happened. So with that information, you now know more about what's going on with the appliance rather than asking the customer, because let's face it, most of the times customers are not going to tell us exactly what the problem is. They, they just, a lot of the times the person that you're speaking to is not the primary user and they're probably going to tell you, Hey, listen, you're the technician. I don't know what to tell you. You fix it. I, I just know that my fridge is not working the way it, you know, that it used to. So that's the fault code information. And that's, what's going to help you assess the situation better. So you can understand what's, uh, what's going on. Now, in addition to this, uh, these uh, real time diagnostics, you also have access to the cloud-based service documentation. So for example, on this fridge, um, you guys are aware of the GE appliances. We do have a mini manual that we put in there. Sometimes you'll be there, um, you know, second time, uh, I'm sorry, not the second time, but you'll be the second technician that services this appliance and you're looking for that mini manual and it grew legs and, and walked away, right? Miraculously. Well, you don't have to worry about that because now on the application, let's say I want to pull up that mini manual. I have it now in digital form and you can actually zoom into it and look at the schematic diagrams and all the information that uh, that you wanted to know about that specific appliance. So those days of carrying around papers, thing of the past, right? And that's that's exactly what Smart HQ service is. It's uh, it's a way to elevate your level of service to a, you know to push you into the uh, into your your next level of, of of service here. So you guys were taking a lockering class today, right? Or this week you're taking seal systems. We're learning about Vulcan lockering connectors, and uh, you know some people might say, hey, you know what? I'm old school. I do brazing. I don't need that lockering stuff. And hey, let me tell you, in some ways, lockering is very much like smart HQ service in the sense that if you don't keep up with the technology, you're going to be left in, you know, left behind, right? With lockering, yes, you can you you can braze pretty much anything, but try brazing aluminum connections. You could do it. it takes a special skill set, very difficult. With lockering, very, very simple, right? And of course, smart HQ service, you might tell me, oh yeah, I can just call tech line. They'll tell me what buttons to press to get into the service multiple default codes. Good luck trying to get through tech line on a busy summer day, right? You'll be there half hour, 20 minutes, whatever it is, sometimes even more just trying to get through to somebody. So this technology is going to save you a lot of time and time is super valuable, right? Your time is more valuable than, than anything, you know, uh, just all together. All right. So again, you have access to the uh, service manual and mini manual, but you also have access to the service bulletins that are applicable to this specific product. So again, if I were out there, for example, I'm out there uh, fixing this unit, right? This refrigerator, I can look at the service bulletins. Um, for example, I could see here that I have a uh, loose handle service bulletin and it tells me exactly what part, uh, what part I need, what the procedure is, step-by-step, step, it gives you all of that information. So rather than you having to go to our service website, our GE service website, and looking through thousands of documents, everything has been basically spoon fed to you right here because you connected to that model and, it, and only the uh, documents that are related to this model will pop up first as service or training bulletins. So that in itself is, is, is really, really nice. And you can also pre, um, pre assess what's going on with the product you're about to service. Let's say that I know that I'm going to service this, this unit, right? For a door handle, just, you know, let's just say for argument's sake. 
And um, before I go out there, I can actually get the part because I know the information already. I can get the part, go out there, do the repair in one single service visit. And how awesome is that, right? That you can actually proactively find and acquire the parts that you need so that when you get out there, you don't have to uh, order, you know, order the part or have to come back a second time. So the service documentation itself, huge. Whoops, this thing must have gotten disconnected. So let's um, see what happened here. Oh, okay, not sure how that happened, but uh, thanks for pointing that out. All right, any questions about anything I've talked about here uh, so far? So we talked about the dashboard screen, firmware updates. Um, I'll show you a little quick video uh, on how the update actually takes place. You'll see how simple it is, okay? So again, I don't want to bore you too much with a lot of this information. There will be more service bulletins available, more uh, documentation available for some of the other products that we're currently seeing out there in the field. For example, uh, service bulletins related to the ultra fresh uh, dryers, to the um, you know the different different training bulletins that you see out there. This could be almost like uh, an alternate to actual training also, because we have a lot of training bulletins. Training since the pandemic has been scarce, right? It's very difficult to get out there for, for us to travel out there to train you. So in lieu of that, you can actually look at our uh, documentation here on Smart HQ Service and, and get yourself up to date. Now, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the next screen, which is the actual diagnostics, right? Where you can actually do some heavy duty diagnosing of the appliance. So I'm gonna show you one thing first. Um, you know, I mean, this room right now, pretty hot in here. What do you, what do you think the temperature is in here? 90. Give me a, it's about 80, maybe not 90, because you have some <laughs> decent air conditioning here, Brandon, but we do, it is hot, right? It's not 65 degrees. It's not, uh, you know, it's not very, very cool in here. It's actually relatively warm. So with Smart HQ Service, I'm not only going to tell you uh, what the temperatures, internal temperature, what the refrigerator's internal temperature values are, but I'm also going to be able to show you what the ambient temperature is. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to click this button up here called the uh, watch box button. So if I click on that, I can see right here all the thermistor values inside the fridge, just like that and in Fahrenheit. So right now I can see that my fresh food thermistor is 35 degrees. So that's good. The fresh food compartment is working fine. The freezer thermistor, it's 4.36 degrees. So that's what my freezer compartment is at. And of course, my ambient humidity is 50 degrees. My ambient temperature, it's 81 degrees. So sir, back there, uh, you, you pretty much nailed it, right? Um, it's about 80 degrees in here. And of course, 80 degrees, it's a little warm for the appliance, but as you can see, it's still, still functional. Now, if it was much hotter than that, like if it's in a garage that's not insulated, you might have a little bit of an issue. As far as the evap thermistor, the freezer evap thermistor, it's at minus eight degrees. So we can see the freezer evaporated thermistor. Now this is um, a relatively simple product. Doesn't have that many, uh, it's, it's a, a single evaporator, right? It doesn't have as many thermistors as other units do, but think about those units that have dual evaporators and they have two ice makers. You have an ice, uh, ice, uh, ice box thermistor um, and uh, ice maker mold body thermistor, right? For each one of the two, two ice maker sections. You want to know all of that information before you open the doors. Because you know that as soon as you open the doors, uh, and a lot of us do this, right? I'm guilty of it myself. I used to use the liver for a red thermometer to shoot around. All that warm air will go inside and it will totally skew your, your temperature readings. So with this information, you're able to tell exactly what's going on. And what I like to call this is accurately assessing the situation, right? You don't have to pull the unit out of its point of installation to go to the control board and measure each thermistor for resistance, then go to a chart to convert it. You don't have to do any of that. Right here, it tells you in real time what's, what's happening. And if I were to uh, change the temperature values, you would see that, that change as well. We're gonna do that um, in a little bit, okay? We're gonna activate like maybe the defrost heater or the compressor and see what kind of changes we get. All right, in terms of, um, here's a couple more features, the operate loads and the diagnostic tests. So if I go to operate loads, I can activate each component individually. And this is pretty handy uh, in cases, for example, where your customer states that there's a, let's say a noise complaint, right? Let's say the customer is complaining about an intermittent noise that happens every once in a while 
but of course, you know, you know the rule, right? When you're driving to the customer's house, the noise is present. As soon as you step foot in that door, noise is by, you know, an act of miracle, it's gone. And you could be there all day. It's not coming back. But as soon as you leave, the noise will be right back. So you need to have control of your own destiny right now. You can enter service mode to activate stuff. But again, you have to press a series of keys. Smart HQ service activating components is as simple as flipping on a light switch. Let me demonstrate. So let's go to the uh, fans and, and dampers area. All right. If we just, we're in the blue screen right now. If we click on that, it's going to give me the status. In other words, what is currently going on in my appliance? So here it's telling me that my freezer evap is off. My condenser fan is off and my fresh food damper is closed. That's the current state of the refrigerator. Now, let's pretend that this noise was a, as, a, as a result of something hitting the condenser fan blade. Would you, would you hear it right now? No, because it's off. But again, if I want, you can either wait for it to turn on or you can use Smart HP Service to instantly activate it. So let me go ahead and show you how that's done. So we go back here, we enter service mode, and when you enter service mode, the screen is going to turn red, and that essentially makes this right here your remote control for the appliance. Literally, this is a remote control for the appliance. So now I can go ahead and go to the fans and dampers, and if I want to activate that condenser fan, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. My only option is on low, so let's go ahead and turn it on. And you'll see that the status is going to change from off to on, and uh, now you would be able to actually hear the sound, like you would hear the, the rattling if there was some kind of noise there. And that right there would, you know, the customer would agree with you and say, oh, yeah, that's the noise I hear. And that happens every once in a while. So now that you've actually reproduced the sound, you can uh, confidently replace those parts, you know, and, and take care of the issue. Let me give you um, something else over here that, that we can see. So the freezer evaporator fan, if I go ahead and turn that, I can select a different speed. If I go ahead and turn that on, uh, again, the status is going to change from off to on. But one more thing I'm going to see here is the RPM value. Now, that RPM value is a beautiful thing because, think about it. If you're trying to find out whether you have a bad fan or a bad main control board, right? So the fact that the load status went from off to high means the main control board is sending voltage to the fan for it to rotate. Good control board. The RPMs means that the fan is spinning and it's sending signal back to the main control board because it's, it's running. Good uh, fan motor. But let's say that your load status is high but you have zero RPM, that's a bad fan. Or something's restricting it or you have a bad wire harness in some cases, right? But what if that load status never changed from off to high? What is, what is that? Is that a bad fan? No, that's a bad main control board. And that's a way that you can determine whether you have you know, you need to replace one part or, or both or, or neither one in this case, right? They're, they're both functioning correctly. So that, that in effect is, is operate loads. Uh, operate loads allows you to activate components individually. Um, let's see what else we have over here. But uh, before I show you uh, any other stuff, um, any questions out there that you might have about anything I talked about? Yeah. If you operate a fan and mm -hmm. it doesn't and you don't hear it turn on, will the machine indicate fan not spinning? So the very good question, Brandon. So the RPMs will remain at zero and it'll be in red because when the main board is trying to send voltage to the fan, it's expecting an RPM reading. So it will show you um, not only that, but also when your fault codes on the dashboard screen came up, it'll, it'll display that fault code. In fact, if we were to jam, for example, the condenser fan uh, and then, you know, run the unit, the fault code would show up as, as a bad, uh, it would just say, you know, fault code related to the condenser fan. Of course, you still have to be a technician and go in there and diagnose, you know, troubleshoot what's going on. But at the very least, Smart HP Service has pointed you in the right direction and you're not trying to figure it out on your own, like just, you know, guessing like, like back in the day. Not that long ago, right? We're, we're not that old. We're still, we're still, we still have some good mileage left here in this room, I think. I think, I don't know. I, I'd like to believe it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the heaters, right? Um, how do we typically test our, our defrost heaters? Check for resistance across the heater, right? Pull the food out, take the evaporator cover off, check the resistance, or pull the unit out of its point of installation, scratch the floors in the process, and then measure from the back, right? Measure the, the, the resistance value. 
Well, <clears throat> there's a feature here uh, with Smart HQ Service where you can actually activate the heater. And right now, for example, the freezer defrost heater is in the off position, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. So we're going to turn it on, and you see the temperature of the freezer evaporator thermistor is at 5.42 degrees. In a little while, when that heater starts to pick up, uh, you're going to see that, that ther uh, thermistor value go up. That would be a clear indication that we have voltage going across a complete circuit, so we don't have anything open. And of course, the way we know that is because our thermistor value will go up. Now, this is a way to sort of pre-assess the situation, not necessarily fully diagnose it, but at the very least, you have a good idea of what's what's going on before you take take anything apart, right? So um, again, it'll it'll take a little while before it actually begins to to have a significant change in temperature. But guess what? Once that heater gets gets hot, that temperature is going to skyrocket. All right? It's going to go go pretty fast. And the same thing, we're going to show you. The next thing I'm going to show you here is the diagnostic uh, test. We're going to do a cooling cooling system test. You're going to see that as refrigerant flows through the evaporators the temperature is going to drop on the thermistors, all right? And that's, that's what we wanna, wanna look at. But for now, let's take a look at the, uh, the thermistor value. So we can see the heater has been on for how long? Uh, about, and in this case, this particular refrigerator, right? It's different from, for each model. But in this particular case, both the freezer defrost and the ice maker fill tube heaters, both of them are on and They've been on for about a minute and 20 seconds, and you can see already my, my temperature is beginning to, to change, you know, ever so slightly. Eventually, it's, it's really going to, going, to, going to go up, okay? So, any questions about anything I've talked about here? You, you said that the... Uh, I'm going to grab if, some water while you ask the question. You said that if, the, if you turn on a component and yep. you don't turn on, it, it will show like zero RPM, but you also said about the thermistors. And will it show a thermistor out of specification? So the thermistor will only show in, in red if it's open or shorted, mm -hmm. but you will see the, the number, right? You'll see, for example, on a fridge, um, fridge compartment. If the unit has just been plugged in, you know, 10 minutes ago, of course, the values will be high. But if that unit has been sitting in that customer's house, you know, for a year or whatever, that thermistor shouldn't be more than 37, 38 degrees or so. If you see like 50, 60 degrees, you know, you have a problem. And um, you will get an alert, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure, that will tell you the temperature has been has been higher than normal. It won't necessarily be a fault code at that moment, but uh, you, you, you'll you probably be alerted that there's, there's an Can issue. Can you look at the logs? The history will show also that. Oh, yeah. We're going to take a look at the history right now. Uh, of this refrigerator, the temperature values, because uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. That's uh, that's my next uh, topic over here. That's a feature called cycle history that essentially is like a, I like to call, you know, like an airplane, they have the black box that gives the authorities, you know, kind of a history of what happened. Uh, the same thing here, the refrigerator or any other appliance that you're working on, you're gonna be able to tell what, you know, what's been going on. So this one. The was the same. Oh, yeah. It all hot, cold. It just yep. <clears throat> We're going to show you right here, right now. Okay. Yep. So, uh, once before I answer your question, just one second. So, take a look over here, my friends. The load status of the heater is on. Look at the freezer evap. It's already up at, uh, you know, 15.7 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Okay. So, it's, it's definitely going up. Yes, sir. Question. Uh, if you were to install like a non-OEM part, would it still be able to read that? Or no? uh, I'd like to say no, but I haven't tested it, so I'm not 100% sure. Okay. But we typically advise genuine GE parts. Yes. GE products, genuine GE parts. Yes, sir. Oh, um, how about recall? Do it. Do it. Uh, notify you of recalls within the. Um, Bulletins, uh, the uh, interview calls. You mean my bulletins? I guess they call so, service bulletins? Something like you might got a thermistor that might be underperforming. That, that's, so, like the fans, right? Like the fan, yes, like the tower? Yes. Yeah, that, that's what's. So, that's a service bulletin. Gotcha, gotcha. And on the dashboard screen, right? This this particular unit doesn't have that, that service bulletin applicable to it. But if it were one of those units, the first thing we would have seen on the dashboard screen would have been that service bulletin. And that's what I'm telling you. If you have either you triage your own calls, you know, in your office, or you have somebody that does it, 
if they can look, they can actually use Smart HQ service uh, without connecting to an appliance. Just type in the model number. You can find out, hey, there's a unit that I'm going to be working on tomorrow, have a service bulletin, and maybe I have the part so I can come with it, prepare it, and take care of them one shot. That's that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, anytime, yeah. anytime you can prevent, you know, a second trip, that's that's always uh, in your favor. So great, great question. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off because I don't want that heater to just continuously go on. And just to give you a heads up in case you're wondering, uh, you you cannot damage the unit with Smart HQ service. Okay, a lot of technicians, you know, initially not not so much anymore, but initially when they first got it, they were like, oh my god, can I blow up the main board? Can I accidentally leave the heaters on forever and burn down the customer's house? The answer is no. Both the tool or the, the app and the appliance have built-in safety features that will prevent that from happening. But we do advise once you are done, for example, here the heaters. Once we've done, we're done with this test. Go ahead and just shut them off, which you know we did. It's off, and then just simply exit service mode. So we're going to go ahead and exit service mode, and the screen goes back to blue, and you can disconnect. You know, you can now unplug it. You don't have to unplug the unit. Just unplug the cable and and go on with with your day. Hey, yes, sir. Before you go on the service mode, is there any way that we can uh, we have access to the compressor? Access in terms of if it's working or not? Yeah, yeah. the compressor is something that we can see as a function. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to. That's something that we, this is the we come across a lot. Absolutely, yeah. So so in the load status, uh, sorry, not the load status, but uh, in operate loads, you're able to see certain components, right? Let me okay. click on it again. All right. So there's one that says cooling system. Okay. If I click on cooling system, I can tell right now if the compressor is on or off. Okay. So the status of it currently, it is off, but if I want to turn it on, I can turn it on. Okay. Just, you know, with, with this. Again, it's just like flipping up on a light switch. That's exactly what Smart HQ service allows you to do. Is, is there any plans on putting pressure sensors in so you can see your pressures through that? So we're continuously up, we're updating or trying to improve the application. That's a great suggestion. You know, if we could, if we could add, so elaborate a little more on that. Like, what, what would you like to see? What would help you in terms of that? Just a, a high low side pressure sensor. So you know, we say high side pressure and low side pressure. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we def I mean, it's definitely in theory it's doable, but that's. I think that's a great suggestion, and uh, thank you for bringing that up. And anyone else that has, you know, this is not a a tool that we say, okay, this is this is perfect. We're never gonna, you know, upgrade it again. This has evolved over the years. And if you were to purchase this, you know, two, three years ago, uh, back then it was only offered to authorized uh, servicers. There's a lot of features that we've added since, right? Uh, because of suggestions like, like, like uh, from technicians like yourselves. So anything that you could tell us, hey, wouldn't it be great if you had this feature or something? Our engineering takes that, you know, looks at the feasibility of it, see if it's, if it's something plausible. And then if, if it is, we, we apply it. Yes, sir, question. Does uh, purchasing a subscription, is that like a lifetime worth of updates or we have to pay for an additional update every time? You're talking about the firmware updates or updating like the module? The module. So the module comes preloaded with all the uh, information or it comes preloaded to work, you know, at the most current version, uh, but it will uh, auto update. So kind of like your, it'll update because you're connecting it to your mobile device, right? Um, but yeah, you won't have to like trade in the module or anything like that. And as far as in case anybody's wondering, how many firmware updates are you allowed? You know, it's it's unlimited. If all you do is firmware updates, you can do as many as you'd like. It's there's there's really no limit. The only limit is yourselves, how much you use the tool. That's that's the limitation that you have. All right. So uh, so sir, in the back, you were talking about cycle history, and I think that's something important that, that we need to discuss here. So with cycle history, one of the nice things about this is that again, as I was mentioning in the, in the, you know, before the class started, cycle history gives you the ability to preview what has been happening with the appliance before you even got there, right? So if you click on cycle history right now, you can see that all my, there's a lot of data, right? I'm gonna sort of flip this so that it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, let's see for some reason, I guess it, uh, all right. So right here, I hope it stays like this. We can see all the temperature values. And again, this will give us the data for the last six days 
uh, the appliance has been utilized. Now, in this case, um, you notice before the fault codes came up four days ago because the unit has only been plugged in, I guess, for four days. This is brand new product, just was recently acquired by the Academy. But a customer's home, right, that, that appliance is going to be there, you know, whatever, month, year, whatever the case may be. And you will not only be able to tell in numerical format what the temperature values are, but you're also going to be able to graph them. Okay, so for example, if I want to graph what the uh, min minimum and maximum temperature for my fridge compartment are, just to know that, you know, whether it's been working fine or not, I can go to a fresh food max temperature and fresh food min temperature, add that to the graph. And let's just add one more. I'm going to add the uh, freezer evaporator max uh, temperature. So we graph those and we can see the data right here um, in, in graph mode. And if there were any spikes, so right there, here, here you have a spike. At that point, this is telling me that there was some some kind of, um, you know, this at this point, there must have been some, some, some kind of event that caused that temperature to go up. Now, I can look further in the data and I can find to see if there was a defrost, um, a defrost event or maybe if the door was left open. So let me see how far that is. It's about, I don't know, three quarters of the way back. So let me go back to the table over here. Turn this back on. And let's take a look and see if we can find anything about this. Um, so I'm going to look at my fresh food door open and I'm going to look at my heater. These are defrost heater when that temperature went up. All right, so here we go. 68, I know it's a little hard to see, but I'm going to read it. 68 degrees, the fresh food maximum temperature and 11 minutes on the freezer defrost heater, bingo. The reason why that temperature spiked is because the heater went on. Now, in the graph, you saw that, uh, if I graph it over here, it's not, this, va this, um, this value, this high value, doesn't stay high consistently, it just went up and down. Because that's the time the heater went, went on and off. But if it would have stayed high, that's a problem. And there you have to look further, right? You can look, up, you can look at compressor runtime, you can look at number of door openings, Again, uh, the kids may, may have left the door open ever so slightly, or the customer overloaded the fridge. You see how it's kind of open right now? They overloaded it and they, you know, they couldn't close the door. Um, that could also be an issue. And of course, in our table here, it'll tell you, um, so freezer, for example, freezer door open, it tells you in minutes. And let's see if we have the fresh food door open. Yeah, fresh food door open. It tells you the minutes, but you can see it's uh, it's all zeros right now, except the first time it was left open for six minutes. And it's only going to record anything over one minute. If you just open the door, you know, 10 seconds, take out a bottle of water, something like that, it's, it's not gonna record that information. But let me tell you how powerful this is, okay? Um, and I'll give you a, a quick example over here, also for our audience to be able to see on the screen. Um, I wanted to share with you this PowerPoint presentation here where uh, if you're looking at, for example, uh, washing machines, right? So how many times have we come across maybe a case where the customer is stating, and this, this is where cycle history really comes into place. Customer is stating that their washing machine is taking too long to finish the load. Or, I'm kind of going to stand over here, or uh, the clothes are coming out wet, okay? In this case, most of the time, it's not an issue related to the product. A lot of the times, this is going to be an issue that is specific to the way the customer is using the appliance. So with cycle history, we can actually see things like cycle that was selected, right? You can see here, this customer is, you know, they're using towels, normal, sanitized cycle with oxy, whatever that is. You can see the cycle duration time. So if a customer says, this machine is taking five hours to finish the load, I mean, the worst thing you could do is call a customer a liar or argue with them, right? But here you can actually see in, you know, with real numbers what the actual duration time was. And um, you can also see the maximum spin speed. All of these parameters are going to be of key importance because obviously, depending on which cycle they selected, you want to make sure that the unit was able to ramp up to that speed so that the clothes spun out completely and they came out essentially dry, right? Now, here's a quick example of, um, and by the way, you can also graph, graph the data, but here's a quick example where a technician uh, was called upon because their washing machine or, or the customer's washing machine was taking 85 minutes to complete a normal cycle. And 
with the tool, right? With Smart HK Service, the technician was able to see that this customer had four out of balance redistribution events, which means the machine was overloaded. And every time the machine tried to spin uh, at high speed, it would kind of go out of balance. So it would have to refill the machine with water, spin it again. And each time that happened, of course, added to the total uh, cycle duration time. That's what extended it to 85 minutes. But with this information, this customer can easily explain to, to, to his customer that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the unit. The only problem is that the customer perhaps overloaded the machine and the customer will be satisfied with that explanation okay? because they may now know that you know what's going on and that you are confident in, in what's, what's happening. In addition to that, think about this, right? If you see in the cycle selection, normal, 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 is that customer really just washing clothes or are they just never turning that dial ever ever and they're washing bedding towels everything else right that's they're misusing it, right and you're there to educate them you know you, you explain to them and if you do that uh, properly you know they're gonna love you for it because there's nothing wrong with the product they're convinced and they're probably not gonna call you back that you'll have completed that service call in a single single business okay question sir yes uh, if I were to send a technician uh, to, uh, to a house and uh, troubleshooting, and, and they started to, you know, doubt you know, that something with the thermistor, but they're not sure. Can they share the, uh, the their information with me that I might be in, in another location or yes. in an office, and then we can both collaborate and say, yes, do this or follow this. So that is a great question, and the answer to that is yes. This is another really, really awesome feature of Smart HQ Service. The ability for you to share the data that you collect, right, when you connect to a Bluetooth uh, module on an appliance with pretty much anyone in your uh, service company. So you have to be logged in with the same account or with a service manager that's, that's in the office. So let's say you have a rookie technician and everybody knows how difficult it is to find good technicians these days, right? You want to find a technician that's both technical and has good customer service skills. It's tough to get that, that perfect package, but you might have something, somebody that's really good with customer service skills, but they don't understand all the data. So they say, what, what's your name, sir? Juan. Juan, so Juan Tocayo. Yeah. <laughs> so they say, hey, Mr. Juan, you know, uh, Mr. Service Manager Juan, uh, I just connected to this fridge, but honestly, I see all these numbers, all this data. I'm not really sure what it means. Can you take a look at it? Well, you can open on your application or on something that, that I'm going to demonstrate called Smart HQ Service Web. You can open up and see uh, virtually in real time, right? It's a little delayed by maybe a minute or so, but you can see what the technician saw on their device on, on your end. So you can look through the data. You can look it through all the, for example, all the, all the cycle history and say, Ah, oh, okay, you can graph it and say, okay, here's a problem. Let, let's say this example, there's no problem with that fridge. You had a defrost heater turned on, that's why the temperature was high, but it's working perfectly well. And now that tech can, can explain with confidence to their, to their customer rather than just saying, I, I don't know what's going on. Because that, anytime you say you don't know, forget it. You, even for one second, you've lost the customer. But guess what? You bust this tool out in front of the customer's house and you start testing stuff and activating components, they are like so thrilled by it. They are enamored by this tool. They actually want it. Of course, they can't have it because this is a service tool. Um, so, you know, your credibility, what I'm trying to say is as a technician, your credibility level goes through the roof. I've seen it so many different times, right? We're, we're not always looked upon as the most glamorous people that walk into your house, right? We're, we're there to fix things. Even though we're very skilled, we're very talented, customers sometimes, they, they don't see that. Once they see you using te technology, I don't like to call you guys, if you use this, I'm never gonna call you a technician anymore. You are now a technologist because you're using modern technology to do your job. I, I firmly believe that. Yes, sir. Uh, there's a question from one of the viewers that, yep. and I don't know if it's like what he asked, but can you store notes into the fridge so that if another tech goes out, they can see the notes on the app of the previous tech? Somebody reading my mind out there? This is not scripted. That's that's exactly what I was going to talk about next. The answer for, for the viewer out there is yes, you can actually uh, store notes. So I want to actually show you that very quickly while we're, we're, we're hot on the topic here. Oh, sort of uh, got out of here. I think every time the, I've flipped the screen, it uh, goes away. Thanks, thanks for pointing it out. 
So for the uh, member out there in the audience that asked the question, can you can you see the notes of what the previous technician did? Uh, you know when they when they service this appliance? Absolutely yes. So let me go ahead and show you right now how this can actually help you if you're, for example, going out there for the second time, right? So it happens, right? We have to go out to service the same product again. But the best case scenario would be, you want to know what happened before, right? What did that technician do before you went out there? What they found, maybe if they took pictures, if they took some notes, that would be nice, wouldn't it? So Smart HQ Service actually does that. Let me go ahead and show you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, scroll down here to where it says Diagnostic History, and this is going to answer your question as well, Juan. So if I go to Diagnostic History here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear the model because I don't want that, uh, that model that popped up there. I'm going to go Month. And in this case, I'm going to unclick show only mine. So when you unclick show only mine, this is going to show you a month's worth of data for anyone that is connecting to appliances via the, the same account, right? So basically anybody within your company, if you have, you know, fellow technicians that work in, in the same company. So if I go ahead and hit search, I'm just going to go ahead and randomly select one, one of the service calls and I'm just going to go back here. All right, let's take a look at this. Uh, June, this is all July, so let me go, let me switch this a little bit. Uh, let me go back a year. Is it gonna show? No, it's not. So I had a perfect example, but let me do a custom. So we're gonna do dates from June 20, from June, uh, let's say June 12th or June 11th, and then we're gonna go to June uh, 29th. Okay, so let me just select those those service calls that were ran during that time, only because I have an example here of uh, a very specific example of a refrigerator that I worked on, okay, that, that shows this. So let's say that I'm today, this refrigerator happens to be this PDY22 whatever number. I could see here that this unit was serviced on June 24, 2022, and this little circle over here indicates that there's some kind of pictures or even videos of what the technician took. So if I go ahead and click on that, not only am I going to see when the unit was, was worked on, but the technician notes. Take a look at this example. This technician went out there because the complaint was no ice, no water. No defect found, the plumber shut off the water supply. It happens, right? So what happened is the plumber was out there maybe fixing the faucet, whatever, they shut off the supply. Didn't turn it back on the supply to the to the fridge. Customers freaking out because they don't have ice or water, and of course they called us a technician. That's that's what the te this technician did. But if I look at my uh, look further, let me take a look at the pictures the tech took. So I can see here the tech took a picture of there's the there's a water supply right. So I can see that, and uh, he tells me that water supply is under the bathroom sink. Who'd have thunk that right? Where so you you even know where the water supply is. Customer was a little bit weary about the ice maker. They're like, I don't know, the ice maker must be broken. The technician took a picture of it and they put some notes. Ice maker is in perfect condition. So now you have this history. You know what's what's happening, right? But in addition to that, this technician was also nice enough to take a video of the unit dispensing water. So we're gonna actually go to the videotape here. Uh, there it is. So this technician went above and beyond, right? And of course, this you know this is an example that uh, that I like to give here, just, just so everybody sees it. But uh, this technician not only gave you notes, but took pictures and videos, and you can see the cycle history. You can also look at temperature values. Now, you could look at this. Think about this way: you could look at this before you even send the tech out there, and if that customer calls you back, you might want to call them before and say. Hey, ma'am or sir, um, can you do me a favor? Go to your bathroom sink underneath. Turn on that water supply. That, that plumber could have been there again, right? You never know that. And some customers are, they have zero handy skills, right? Zero. I mean, when I say zero, I mean zero. And, you know, they, they have different skill set, right? They, they don't have to be technicians like us, right? That's fine. But you might find yourself preventing those second service calls when you call the customer and say, Go to your bathroom sink underneath, turn on that faucet to the right, just a couple turns, go dispense water. Do you get water? Bingo, you save that second service call. So just in that in that sense, that's that's so, a wonderful. Because I have come across with it a long time, uh, in the water 
washing machines. Yeah, my goodness, that thing was just so loose that if you were to try to tighten it or open it, you yeah. lost it, it, it could just break or not be reliable for us. I can take pictures with the bills that they need to correct that before we come out again. Oh, yeah. Or a dryer that was so loose in the wall that we were trying to get an electrician to actually properly install that because they had it in the garage. So that's just this is not very handy with pictures. Super handy, and uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's it's again. You can see this from the office as a service manager, or you can your fellow coworkers can see what's going on. Or if you if you're working, maybe you're a rookie, right, and you're trying to talk to a senior tech. They can see the data. They can help you as well. A lot of companies are doing that, right? They hire new technicians. It's all about you know trying to help each other out. Uh, let me go quickly and show you the diagnostic test feature. So diagnostic tests will run a, for example, in this case, a cooling test. So if I go to service mode, and I'm gonna go ahead and activate the compressor, activate the cooling test, what's gonna happen here, when I turn the compressor and condenser in high speed, uh, it's gonna show me my freezer evaporator thermistor value. So right now it's at minus 48 degrees. But now that I turn the condenser on, sorry, the compressor and the condenser on, uh, that value should begin to drop. Now you might, don't be surprised if you see this, this value go up a little bit, because the heater was on, if you'll remember, so it might still be you know ramping up ever so slightly, uh, but eventually, I promise you this: if the seal system was working properly, this number will will begin to drop, and that that's a great thing I think in my opinion because how do we typically after we do a sealed system repair, how do we typically uh, check to see if the refrigerant is getting to the uh, to the evaporator coils? Observe the quill pattern. You observe the quill, right? You take off the covers, you look at the frost pattern, but how how handy is it, right? How how simple is it? To be able to see that temperature value again after a little while, it won't be immediate, but it's going to drop. It'll it'll tell you if you're getting refrigerant there or not, right? And that allows you to maybe perform some other checks before you actually start to you know tear the unit apart. So this is um, this is what we call the, the cooling test, and obviously this is a single um, single evaporator unit. Uh, it's not switching refrigerant like you know the ones that have the three-way valve. It's not switching refrigerant to the different areas of the fridge. Well, on some units, we actually have that three-way valve. Uh, in this test, you'll be able to select whether you want the refrigerant to be sent to the freezer section only, to the freezer and fresh food, or close them both to make sure that that valve is actually fully functional. And what I always like to do, if I'm testing that, if I suspect that that valve is bad, I'll have one finger on the valve, uh, quickly activate that, that test, and the valve, you'll, you'll feel it vibrating as the stepper motor inside is turning. So you know if the valve is good or bad. You might just have to change the valve, that's it. No, you know, don't go into, into, into all the other guts of the system. So in that regard, uh, my friends, the, the cooling test, this is just a cooling test, right? But the diagnostic test, you also have a full uh, ice maker test available. And um, for that, you know, the unit doesn't have, um, it's, it doesn't, doesn't have that, that functionality. But if you visit our YouTube channel, uh, go to YouTube Smart HQ Service, you will be able to see that video where I show you step-by-step uh, step how that is done. In fact, let me just quickly pull it up here on the screen real quick so that you can see uh, yours truly in, in action. So go to Smart HQ Service YouTube, videos, and here, we even have advertising, you know, people advertising. We're, we're getting so popular. No, I'm just kidding. That, that's the y'all ain't paid a prime, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did, right? So let me go ahead and show you over here. So, couple seconds, you should see the water valves turn on and water continue to rotate. Look at the cubes. So, here I show you step by step side view of the app, how the ice maker is working. If you watch this, you'll fully understand how to use Smart HQ Service to diagnose uh, ice maker. Oh, there we go. All right. We need to call and in here. So we're all, we're all good to go. So please make sure that you um, you take a look at that uh, that video when you when you have a chance. And just like you know, Brandon said, uh, please uh, subscribe to our channel, uh, like it, and hit that little bell button right for the north. So I got the three. My son is a YouTuber now. He's doing Nintendo tips. Is this channel? Do like Nintendo. 
I think he gets more views than us. But those kids, they love that, you know, mm -hmm. learning how to use Nintendo. But anyway, um, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll, you'll see the latest and greatest there. All right. Uh, any, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this test because, again, the, the cooling test does take a little little while. But uh, any questions about anything I've talked about so far? Yes, sir. If, if the customer unplugs the unit, let's say it's the thing stuff working, and you get there and you plug it back in, Still have all the data in here, or it still has the data, but obviously during that time, it's right. you're going to be like pause, right? Like, like you put it on pause, yeah. But yeah, it'll, it'll definitely store the data. Uh, yes, sir, question is it for all GE um, washer, dishwasher, everything? Pretty much every appliance, GE appliance, including Cafe Monogram, GE Profile, uh, with the exception of microwaves, because microwaves there isn't too much, they're more electromechanical than anything, so. I think one microwave connects to this. The rest you won't you won't be able to. But you'll still be able to access the service documentation. So if you need it, that that's a great segue to our next uh, topic: parts, right? Um, now you guys can order your parts from anywhere you like. But if you wanted to know what the part number is for that specific unit, uh, we do have the one parts feature over here, which will show you. Uh, for example, for this refrigerator. It'll give you the exploded drawings for each subsection of the of the appliance. So I don't know. Let's just say you needed a that door handle, right? For whatever reason. So here's the door handle. If I kind of zoom in on it, click on the door handle, the part number will be shown down here for you. And what's nice is that if the part has been updated with a you know there's a new revision or something, you'll have because this is connected to the GE database, you'll always have the right part number. So instead of googling it or you know, trying to just figure it out, we, we've done done the work for it. And of course, you can order it uh, from anybody you like. Uh, you can also have it directly sent to you from, you know, the order fulfilled by G Appliances, but that's strictly up to you, right, whatever, whatever your preference is. Now, uh, let me show you, let's see if I can. Oh. I got one more question, too. Yeah. Does that tool help you with older appliances that don't have the Smart HQ that are GEs? Yep, so any service documentation that, that is on our website, oh, our service website, is here. That's you won't be able to connect to it, right? Because like, like I spoke before, connectivity is only back to 2012, units from 2012 and up. But in terms of accessibility to the to the service documentation, it goes back. Service bulletins. Service bullet like years and years. Yeah, yeah. I need that. Yeah. Now, um, in this case, we haven't yet included it, but let me let me just show you very quickly here. Um, this information. So let me reopen up the application over here, and you all just took the you guys just took the lockering class, right? Yeah. So if you want to know what parts you need for your lockering connectors, all right, let's uh, let's go to that. So let's go ahead and show you. This is. By the way, this is how you would log in without connecting to an appliance, okay? So right now, you can see my Bluetooth module is blinking because I'm not paired, I unpaired. Now, I'm not connected to this appliance, so I'm just gonna go ahead and transition to no Bluetooth, and I'm going to enter a model number. So I'm gonna enter PYD22, P, what was this, what was the model I was working with uh, before? E Y D twenty two. Yep, I think this is this is the one. I'm just gonna select. I don't know. Random random refrigerator. GE profile refrigerator. If I go to the one part section in this particular model, and I'm just taking a wild shot right now at this model. I believe it has it. Uh, I will be able to find the. Oh yeah, there it is. The section with the lock ring connectors. That tells you. So everything you learned right now, like. You learn how to do the connections. Now you need to know which connections you need, what diameter. Um, I think you were taught how to measure with the calipers, right? How to measure and well, here we already tell you what you know what connectors you need. So, for example, everybody knows what this line is called in the compressor, right? So for this bad boy right here, what was it again? Just, just testing. You know what it is. But you click on it, and it'll tell you the part number and the, the millimeter. So it will actually show you, and let me just show you a little um, kind of cart that I have built here. If I go to parts finder, uh, let's see if I actually load it in. So there's no guesswork in terms of what size connector do I need. 
you will know exactly which one it is, so long as, of course, it's been loaded to the, to the database. Do you still want to double check? Yeah, of course. You know, just always check your check your work. But uh, if I go to my one parts card over here, uh, this is a card that I just that I just made with the connectors. And this is any any part, by the way. You will actually see high definition, uh, high high resolution graphics of the actual part or parts in case you want to compare. Let's say you have a you know a compressor or an ice maker or a motor for a washing machine. You want to compare the picture of the part you're going to replace with the one here, just to make sure you're getting the right one. Uh, Smart HP services allows you to, to see that, you know, right on the spot, very easily, right from your mobile device. So that, in effect, my friends, is the demonstration, the training that I wanted to give on, on Smart HQ service. Um, as I said, dashboard screen allows you to find out what's going on with the unit, right? Um, diagnose it. The operate loads and diagnostics allow you to actually activate components and test them. And of course, you can also use the cycle history feature. I want you, once you get this tool, I want you to try to understand all the parameters, Not maybe not all, but the most important ones. Because believe me when I tell you, you will uh, cut back on your uh, repeat repairs for those no defect found cases. Sir, a question? Yes, I have a question about firmware update. Yep. Um, so when do you recommend for the firmware update to, uh, for the technician to go out here, you might recommend doing it before or after the complete service call. So, good question. When when should you apply the firmware update? Well, it really depends, right? It depends on, for example, if it's related to a service bulletin. So, I'll give you an example right now in this particular unit right here. Uh, let me see if I if I actually have it. Um, so, service bulletin by model. So, Oh, to, to, to factory installed no cool lock compressor. Let me see what this one is. Okay, so this particular one, this one is a no cool stalled lock compressor. This tells you to replace the compressor, but unfortunately, I can't seem to find it here right now. Um, so let me just give you an example quickly. You know the service bulletin that we have for replacing the fan in the tower because the, uh, the, fan, the fan blade for the refrigerator section has changed, I believe, from three blades to seven blades. Have any of you seen that service bulletin on GE refrigerators? If you haven't, and you might come across it where you have a noisy fan blade, or you have some kind of frost or ice formation, what you'll be required to do is to replace the tower where, where the fan uh, resides. And of course, the fan will be different. Instead of having, um, I forgot exactly what the blade number is, but it'll go to a different different uh, type of fan, right? Different uh, different configuration. Physically, it'll be different. Well, now the main control board has to be updated to be able to work efficiently with that new fan. So in that case, you want to look at your service bulletins, look to see if that firmware update applies to what you're doing, and then you would perform the update then. You don't want to replace a part and not do the update because you're going to go back there again very soon. The main control board is still going to think that the old fan is there and it's gonna run it the way it did before and you're probably gonna have the same same issue. So in that case, that would be one, one scenario. The other one is uh, sometimes you have a simple service bulletin, right? Uh, for example, there's one on, on these refrigerators where the customers can actually have an app on their mobile device called Smart HQ, not Smart HQ service, but Smart HQ that you know tells them the temperature values of the fridge, they can activate their ice maker on and off if they go on vacation, but it'll also alert them of specific things the fridge might, you know, might be encountering. One of those things is it will alert them falsely that their fridge has a hot water uh, problem. And the customer's like, what hot water? This fridge doesn't have that Keurig hot water heater. That's a software related issue. And in that case, you absolutely want to perform that software update, even without replacing any parts, because in the event the customer gets that app, and they want to use it properly, the software update will enhance the, the user experience. It, it'll show up firmware update needed. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then just click on it. Go. Yep. So let me show you a quick video of how the update takes place. Very, very quickly. And, uh, so as we say around here, let's go to the videotape. Oops. All right. Here we go. 
Once your device is connected, Smart HQ service will detect if an update is required. No need to check the website or call anyone for support. Smart HQ service eliminates all of the guesswork. And remember, it works with both Android and iOS devices. And now, let's start that update. From the dashboard screen, click Next. Click the firmware update button and details about the update will populate on your screen. Click Start. Press and hold yes for three seconds to confirm you'd like to start the update. Smart HQ service will automatically update both boards one and two. Upon successful completion, you will see this confirmation message. Now, simply click done and you're all set. So, uh, as far as your question, right, what is it that you're going to see? So this, the screen that you would see is this right here. You'll see the little firmware update with the triangle. That will be your indication. As soon as you connect to the appliance, that will be your indication that you have a firmware update available. All right. So you can do it, but what I would do, I would click on it, read the, um, the description of what it does. Uh, and then, you know, you go ahead and perform it. In fact, washing machines, you run into noise and vibration all the time, right, with washers. I just saw a firmware update somewhere out there where just by updating the firmware, you will actually enhance the, the stability of the machine or, or rather eliminate the noise and, or reduce the noise and vibration. And how wonderful is that, that you can, instead of physically turning legs or knobs or whatever on the unit, with an update, you can, you can take care of it. And again, when, when customers see you doing this, this is high-tech stuff, let me tell you, right? Just like uh, if you, you know, on your vehicles, you need updates. Sometimes you have to take it, bring it into the mechanic. This is pretty high-tech stuff. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, everyone, is uh, our, um, again, our, we're always, oh, you want me over no, here? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm good, good over here. <laughs> so the last thing I, that I want to talk about real quick, and I'll have you point the, cam the camera to the screen over here, is what we call Smart HQ Service Web. And Smart HQ Service Web is a desktop version of the app for, uh, for example, if you're a client, if you're a service manager and you don't do the service repairs yourself, but you want to support your team, you want to look at all the documentation on your desktop, right? Rather than looking at a little, you know, on your little mobile device, you want to see it on your, you know, gigantic screen in the office or heck, you could be at the beach. I could be in, in, in Miami Beach right now, you know, taking in some sun, look at my tablet, monitoring what my techs are doing and supporting them right from there. You can do that with Smart HQ Service Web. So let me go ahead and show you what that is, and then we'll open it up to some questions. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me. My name is Juan Morales, Senior Staff Field Application Engineer for Smart HQ Service here at GE Appliances. We are very excited to bring you the newest addition to the Smart HQ Service family of products, Smart HQ Service Web. Designed to be used in an office environment, Smart HQ Service Web promotes two core business functions to support service managers and in house technical support personnel. One is the ability to quickly and easily access service documentation by simply entering a model number. The other is the ability to view the data that is captured whenever a service technician connects to the client side of the field using the Smart HQ Service app. These two powerful functions are certain to add a whole new dynamic to your triage process and increase your first time completion rate, which can dramatically lower the cost of operating your business. And don't forget, Smart HQ Service Web is designed to run on any browser and on any device, giving you complete control and flexibility. So, whether you use a PC, a tablet, or a mobile device, you will have instant access to things like product information, service documentation, exploded drawings, fault code information, and much, much more. You can even order parts right on the spot, saving you both time and money. Now, let's take a closer look at how this product can help facilitate communication between you and your service technicians out in the field. Smart HQ Service Web has an amazing feature called Diagnostic History, 
which lets you view the data from the products your service team is working on, all in a matter of seconds. See the data they see whenever a Bluetooth connection is made using Smart HQ service. You can instantly view any fault codes or alerts the product may be exhibiting. The embedded cycle history feature gives you a complete overview of how the product has been recently operated. For example, if your tech is working on a refrigerator, you can get a complete history of things like internal temperatures, ice maker fills, compressor run times, and more. Smart HQ Service Web even lets you graph the data for a simpler view. And because this data is permanently stored in the cloud, it can be accessed anytime. Smart HQ Service Web makes it easy to search through your entire team's service history by simply entering the model or serial number, as well as any notes taken during a repair session. In the event of a complex issue, pictures and videos can be easily shared so you can see exactly what's going on and provide the best possible guidance. It's like being right there next to your technicians. With this level of communication, you can support your entire service team like never before. Alrighty, my friends, and there you have it. As you can see, Smart HQ Service Web is the ultimate solution to all of your technical support needs. Elevate your level of service today by visiting smarthqservice.com or call 502-714-2029. Once again, thank you so much for watching. And remember that at GE Appliances, we are here to help and always here for you. All right, so that is uh, Smart HQ Service Web. Again, a web-based version of the application, so you can pretty much access it anywhere, anytime, from anywhere on the planet, as long as you have you know, a solid internet connection. So my friends, that is the presentation, the training that I wanted to give. For those of you out there in the audience, thank you for joining us, and thank you for your questions. Once again, I want to just quickly mention our website. It is smarthqservice.com. And of course, you can always call us at 502-714-2029. That number, once again, put it in your uh, you know quick dial, speed dial, whatever you call it, 502-714-2029. So I just want to bring up Brandon here one last time to just uh, just say one, uh, a couple of final words. And uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity, Brandon. Well, thank you for coming, man. Let's, let's give it up for this guy. Give him a thank you. Very impressive tool. I will be purchasing it. The the proven the selling point that got me was when you said we get access to everything previous. Okay. And um, for you guys who are new and just starting, he said something called service bulletins, but he said it fast. Like, oh, you get service bulletins. But let me explain to you what those service bulletins are. Those service bulletins are what the manufacturer wants you to know about a particular model. If it's notorious for a certain culprit or if it has a, 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 a known you know defect this service bulletin will tell you hey you need a specific part that the manufacturer uh, sears parts direct or any marcom.com any any place where you buy your parts they may not have the 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 bulletin like hey for this you need this upgraded part so those service bulletins are important and uh uh you can retrace all of them, even previous models. That's what made me want to sign up right there, just with that. And uh, another thing that I like is when you when you do a job, uh, you know, customer pays you. Uh, seal system, you know, we charge a, a decent dime. Yep. You know, we don't want to uh, go back or, or 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 you know have an issue and have to refund the customer. So what I like about this app is you can. Kind of hold off on making that deposit. Go run some calls, look at your app, make sure your fridge is starting to cool. And at the end of the day, they say, okay, yeah, she's cool. Let me go ahead. You know what I'm saying? So I like that you could check your previous work and uh, it's very transparent, the communication with the technology. So uh, you got a, a, a customer with me, man. Awesome, man. Thank you. Well, Brandon, thanks again for, for uh, inviting us to your, you have a great academy here. Thank you. Uh, so everybody, TMM Academics. This is a place to be. You can learn, learn by day, go party in Miami at night. That's what I'm gonna do tonight. So yeah. all right everybody. That's what we're gonna do tonight. That's it, that's it. All right, all right thank, thank you, you guys. for joining us. We'll see you next time.